You ever see a toy you really want but can't have? Well, turns out actors do that all the time. It feels like they get so attached to their characters that they can't help but steal some of the fun props they've used on set, and you won't believe what some of your favorite stars snatched as their shoots ended. I can go all day, Dopinder. The point is, it's bad. I mean, are you telling me you wouldn't try to take home the gigantic Avengers A or a signature Batarang? I know I would. But you have to have movie star swagger to pull it off. Let's begin. Be calm, we have got one clear off. Okay, I'm gonna start off by breaking the rules a little bit, but bear with me because I do believe it still counts. So obviously any sort of Avengers memorabilia is going to be a hot commodity, and it shouldn't be surprising that the MCU's biggest star would want to take home the flashiest, biggest prop. During the shooting of Avengers Age of Ultron, the Avengers Tower is fully established, meaning it has the gigantic A blazoned on top of it. After shooting was over, RDJ saw this gigantic prop and told the production crew that he wanted it. He saw no point in it sitting in a warehouse in England and asked for it to be shipped to his office in LA. And it worked. They sent it to him because, of course they did. Could you really say no to RDJ? I think at that point, RDJ had so much clout, he could have asked to play a de-aged version of himself as the new Peter Parker, and producers would have had to have listened. Good thing he stopped with just the A, right? So although he didn't quite steal it without anyone knowing, he basically stole it using his charm. Even though Thor's whole arc in Thor Ragnarok was about how much of a hero he could be without an object like his hammer, Mjolnir is still an awesome weapon. I mean, sure, Thor got an even bigger upgrade in Infinity War and Endgame with his shiny new Stormbreaker, but his OG hammer is just so iconic. It's absolutely intertwined with the character, and seeing Thor without it is just overall weird for everyone, including Chris Hemsworth, who apparently doesn't want to live without Thor's hammer. But here's the funny thing about this. Chris Hemsworth hasn't just stolen one Mjolnir prop, he's stolen a bunch. He's seemingly made it a point to take home a hammer prop every single time he plays Thor in a movie, and he places them all around his home. He's even joked to Jimmy Kimmel that he has one in his bathroom, which, that's a joke, right? Gosh, I can't tell anymore because Chris Hemsworth has turned into a comedian. Though I wouldn't be surprised if that were true, where else would you keep the mighty weapon, right? I think there should be a written rule explaining that if you played a version of a fan favorite character that was just atrocious and they did something unforgivable like, say, sewing the mouth shut, and then you spent years campaigning and fighting to redo the character in another movie, even having to resort to allegedly leaking test footage to increase fan excitement, and then finally getting another solo movie and absolutely rocking it and being born for the role, all should lead to the rule of you get first dibs on whatever you want. Obviously, I'm talking about Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds' relentless journey to get the character back on the big screen after the disastrous X-Men Origins Wolverine. After the movie was done, Reynolds kept the Deadpool suit as he basically said there was no way at that point that anyone was going to take it from him. And you know what? I believe him. Giancarlo Esposito is the type of actor who's been around forever, and you'd be surprised at how many times you'll go, hey, is that Gus, when watching 90s films. Anyways, Esposito really took his fame to a whole new level after playing the terrifying drug lord Gus Fring in Breaking Bad. His performance in that series, and in the prequel Better Call Saul series, is just a masterclass of acting. Of course, if I talk about Gus and Breaking Bad, I have to mention the iconic season 4 finale titled Face Off, which featured Walter White and Gus's war come to an explosive end. So, Vince Gilligan loves his double meanings, and while the finale title at first seemed to refer to Gus and Walt facing off for the final time, it took on a whole new meaning at the end when Gus's face was blown off thanks to a wheelchair bomb. The image of Gus fixing his tie and then collapsing is one of the most iconic in television history. So, of course, Esposito kept that demented, burnt face prosthetic as a souvenir. The actor has said he kept it in his daughter's room for quite some time until she got too scared, so now it's boxed up and put away, probably for the best. If you were to close your eyes and describe Harry Potter, how would you do it? I imagine the lightning bolt scar would be the go-to first thing, but if you kept going, I'd say his glasses would be next on the list. It's an iconic part of the character and just goes to show how you can be a brave, battle-ready, magical warrior who fights things like giant snakes, dementors, and the Dark Lord, and still just have the worst eyesight imaginable. Like, seriously, they're magic. There's no spell that fixes eyesight? Anyways, Daniel Radcliffe played Harry Potter throughout the franchise, and his eyesight is 
perfect, meaning the glasses were just props. Well, probably because they were so important to the character, Radcliffe wanted to keep a few pairs of the glasses for himself to commemorate his time playing the boy who lived. It's said that he kept a pair of glasses from the first movie as well as the last, which is the kind of artsy thing you'd imagine actors do, right? Ben Affleck turned a lot of heads when he was announced as the next actor to take on the coveted Caped Crusader role. And yes, he had some major detractors, but I think overall his performance was one of the only bright spots in the bloated Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, as well as in the disastrous first version of Justice League. But even though he's a celebrity doing his job, let's not forget that celebrities are just like us. Only, you know, better looking. You're lying. What I mean is that Affleck geeked out just as hard over all the Batman stuff just like we do, and he thought it was so cool to play Bruce Wayne overall. So when the time came, Affleck pocketed a few of the Batarangs. He told a funny story about how the prop department kept calling him asking if he knew where they were, but he lied and kept denying it. We don't know where it is. But then he also joked how he was billed for them afterwards, so he thought he was stealing them successfully, but just ended up paying for them. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the most iconic trilogies of all time, and the Hobbit trilogy is also a thing that exists. Anyways, you can tell the cast and crew formed a strong bond with their characters and their journey, as evidenced by things like the matching tattoos the Fellowship actors got in real life. When it comes to Ian McKellen, the esteemed Gandalf actor took a few things around him that he wanted to keep for himself. This included not only a set of keys to Bilbo Baggins' home, but also he managed to swipe some of the golden coins that were created to fill the dragon and Smaug's lair. Those are cool and all, but if I was McKellen, I would have gone all out and stolen the beard, the gray hat, the staff, and probably one of the rings. You know, if I wanted to risk the fate of the world and all that. Here's another instance of an actor keeping their superhero suit, because really, would you not? Superheroes are the most popular people on the planet right now, and if I got a chance to play one, I'd definitely keep a suit. Suit up. But sadly, I'm just a disembodied voice on the internet, so there will never be a suit for me to wear. Does that make me naked? These are the questions that keep me up at night. Anyways, Andrew Garfield is one of three Spider-Man actors in the last 20 years, and he's talked about how after filming, he took home one of the costumes to keep for himself. The way he put it, the production went through so many suits over the course of shooting his films that he felt it was okay to take one. And who knows, he might need to wear that same suit again if rumors are to be believed. This one isn't really a steal, but I think it's fun to mention. You might wonder why Reese Witherspoon decided to do a sequel to Legally Blonde that didn't seem quite up to snuff compared to the awesomeness of the original. Well, besides a massive payday, Witherspoon also made out like a bandit in the wardrobe department. Wow. With the way the Oscar winner structured her contract, at the end of shooting, Witherspoon was able to keep her character Elle Wood's entire wardrobe, which in total was worth an incredible amount of money. It just goes to show you kids, it's okay to do a lackluster sequel if the perks are good. One last superhero prop, Chadwick Boseman made T'Challa a household name, and the blend of spirituality with technology was just amazing to see on the big screen. One thing that T'Challa had was a set of Kamoyo beads, which in the movie were made of vibranium and could be used for communication. Chadwick Boseman kept this prop for himself and even wore it around in his everyday life. Rest in power, King. If you could steal one prop from a movie set, what would it be? I'm torn between a Chewbacca costume and one of James Bond's Aston Martins. I just think the Chewbacca costume will make me happier in the long run, don't you think? Well, that's the real trick, isn't it?